Hello everyone. I am Pupul Haikrozam. I teach English for classes 9 and 10. Hello everyone. Welcome to English class. Our class today is class 9 English course book text. For this text, we have taken up lesson number B from unit 2. Unit 2 is all about mystery and lesson number B is with the title Aurora Borealis. Yes, we are going to learn about this natural phenomenon that we get to see, we get to observe towards the North Pole known as Aurora Borealis. In our lesson, we are going to know what its meaning is, what the people think it is and what science has explained it about. Nature, as the lesson says, is surrounded with mystery. For example, the solar system itself that we are a part of it itself is a big mystery. The earth, we say it's round but it looks flat, another mystery. The night sky, right, where we have the planets and the heavenly bodies which gives an illusion of the twinkling stars, that again is a mystery, right. So we have so many you know, mystery in and around us, among all the mystery, the natural mystery that we have, okay, we are going to learn and talk about natural mystery known as Aurora Borealis. Aurora Borealis has another name as Northern Lights. Aurora, it is the name of a Roman goddess. She is the goddess of dawn, early morning dawn. The Adugi goddess ne hai maase ko. Borealis means north. So this name Aurora Borealis to northern light, this name was given by the Italian scientist Galileo Galilei. Okay, he gave this name, right? Aurora Borealis. In the North Pole, we get to see this mysterious display of colors. Different colors, you know, it can be seen being displayed in the sky. It's like the laser show. Akwagi laser light na lok taktaga show utpadoko adumaina. Different colors being, you know, displayed there. We get to see red color, blue color, violet, and green also. It differs, okay? It differs and the different color appearing in different time will be discussed further in the lesson. When it started appearing long, long ago, its appearance, it was the cause of alarm and fear and wonder and dread and excitement to the people because they had no proper knowledge about the appearance of this light. Since the people had no proper knowledge about this light, they had different stories associated with it. You know, one group of people giving their own story, another group of people giving another story, right? One such story is mentioned in the book The Labrador Eskimo. This is the name of a book. This book Labrador Eskimo is written by Ernest W. Hawke. So what does the book say? In this book it is found written that the end of the land and the sea it's bounded by an immense abyss. Okay at the end of the land and the sea that is the belief the people had that you know uh, the earth is a flat surface and it ends you know after the land you have the sea and after the sea it gets end and then there is an immense abyss there is a big pit P-I-T So there's an immense abyss right and this land the land that we are on it is surrounded by the sky like a dome like a cover it has a dome right and to go to the heaven you have to go through the dome where it has a hole there right you have to pass through it the soul the spirit after that right so what happens is in order to be able to reach that heaven in order to be able to reach that hole you know you have to take a very dangerous path right it's like crossing a bridge okay from then after that the soul has to go past the dome into heaven but to pass to, through the dome you have to cross this dangerous path because just below the path is the immense abyss it's like crossing a very dangerous bridge okay so the spirits who are already up in heaven what they do is for the new spirit for the you know person who is coming to heaven right fresh arrival for them what happened the spirits already in heaven they light up the path 
for to you know to make it easy for them to cross right so the light that we see in the northern the belief is that according to this book the belief of the eskimo is that the light that we see in the nord north pole it is light lighted up by the spirit for the soul that is coming to heaven it's a guiding light that is what the eskimos believe okay and another sound is also heard they say that a sound is heard when this light appears and they say the sound that is heard with the appearance of the light it is the voices of the spirit and the spirit who are already in heaven the eskimos call them as salamut salamut meaning sky dweller this is what ernest w hawk has written in his book but there are other folklore stories and beliefs of the eskimos regarding the northern lights let us look at them the point bearer eskimo who is, uh, reside mostly in the uh, arctic area they believe that this light is an evil thing whenever this light appears they say that something evil is happening so what they do is whenever this light appears they carry knives with themselves to protect from it because they fear that it is an evil thing and for the fox indians of wisconsin which is in north america they said that it is an omen of war and pestilence omen is like you know a warning to them that war is happening right a pestilence is going to take place pestilence is a plague like chat number the spread of Ill illness or a disease to cause that is what pestilence is so it's like an omen for war and pestilence they believe that you know the ghosts of the slain enemies the enemies whom they have killed in the wars you know in the uh, past war the ghosts of the enemy they're trying to rise up for revenge and when they try to rise up the lights appear this is what they believe and the belief of the east greenland eskimo it is that they believe the northern lights are the spirits of the children who have died at birth and they're dancing you know the dancing of the spirit it causes the movement of the light so the light when the light appear it does not just appear like one spot but it has a movement of its own a rhythm of its own and the rhythm is because of the dancing of the spirit of children according to the algonquin myth algonquin is a group of people that resides in canada they have a belief their belief is that the earth was created by nana bozo okay they believe that nana bozo is the creator of earth so what happens is after nana bozo created the earth he settled he went to the extreme north and has settled there he's taking rest there after creating earth right so their belief is that northern light is the reflection of the fire made by nana bozo nana bozo is making fire there right to make his people believe and remember that he is still in existence that he is still looking after them that he is still for them how the, by by burning up the fire which can be seen in the form of the northern lights in the northern sky then again we have the vikings of the scandinavia and the highland clans of scotland right for them the northern light it's an indication of a battle that is taking place somewhere in the world the scandinavia they call it herring flash and the reason why they call it herring flash is because the lights the movement it resembles a school of fish if we know school of fish that is the group of small fish that we see in the ocean and the water bodies right the movement you know they 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 move in groups in large number of group right and the movement when they move from left to right there's a rhythm in it and because of the beautiful colors they have on their body right the appearance is very good so this movement of the fish resembles the northern light for the scandinavia it is herring flash finally another belief that we find mentioned in the book is about the fins they call it fox fire they call the northern lights fox fire that is because in their folklore in the story they have they you know that is between them it talks about the foxes that have burning tails okay so when the foxes because of their burning tails when they run around the tails the movement of the tail it creates different color so the for, for the fin the northern lights are like the fox fires so these are the beliefs the stories that are associated with the northern lights this is the beliefs of the people who see this is the belief of the people who reside in the northern side the north pole side right this is when there was no scientific advancement but now we are scientifically advanced and science has been able to explain to us why we see the different colors appearing on the northern sky the scientific explanation given that takes it is here 
Sun, as we know, is a big nuclear reactor, right? 24 hour nuclear reaction happening there. Because of the reaction that is happening there, the sun emits particles, right? Which are, which have positive ions in them. They have charged particles in them, okay? And these particles, these positively charged particles, when they get emitted from the sun, they travel at a very high speed, okay? The speed is from one to 86 million miles per hour. With this speed, the particles get, you know, emitted from the sun. Okay? And this process of emission of the charged particles that have positive ions in it, we call it solar wind. And this solar wind, for it to reach the Earth's surface, it takes four days, right? Why? Because of the distance between the sun and the Earth, and that is 93 million miles. Yes, that is the distance between sun and earth. So for the solar wind to reach earth, it takes four days, right? And as the solar wind nears the pole, right? Nears the pole, we know that the earth has a magnetic field of itself. Earth equipment around earth, we know that there is a magnetic field, right? So because of this magnetic field that is around the earth, when the solar wind reaches this pole, reaches the pole, what happens is it gets funneled. Okay, it gets separated, you know, it, 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 it gets split as if it's trying to wrap up Earth. So I get Earth, solar winds, it's flowing towards Earth and then it gets funneled and it tries to wrap around, right? Because of the split, because of the way that it gets funneled, right? And because of the speed with, uh, with which it is traveling, what happens? The uh, positive ions, the charged particle, it knocks out, it sends away electrons from atom that are present in the atmosphere. Okay, atmosphere, we have different gases, the different gases, we have the atoms, right? Of the atoms there, electrons are there. So when the positively charged comes, one electron gets knocked out, sent out from the atom. This knocked out electron goes to another atom. And then again, it catches this atom. And then again, um, you know, knocking out, accepting it, knocking out, accepting it. In this process, what happens? The light gets emitted. And that is why we get to see the lights in the not Paul. So this is the scientific explanation. And the reason why we get to see different colors, the red, the violet, the green, the reason why we see different color, it all depends upon the type of gas or the atom that the charged particle meets when it enters the atmosphere, right? If it meets with oxygen, which is at 60 miles above Earth, the light will appear green. If it meets with oxygen, which is 125 miles above Earth, the light will be red. And if it meets with nitrogen atom, the light will be of that of a soft violet. So now we see why different colors are seen, right? Science is always there to help us. And again, the frequency, the duration, and the visibility of the light, it all depends upon the strength of the solar wind because it is the solar wind which causes the northern lights to appear, right? By the 18th century, when science was already advanced, it was able to make us understand and it was able to give us an explanation as to what the northern lights are, as to what the solar wind is, as to what the magnetic field is, right? And in the 20th century, there was a clear knowledge about the northern lights. That is, northern lights mean solar wind, solar winds and magnetic field. And all this combined together, the appearance of the mystery over the northern sky. So this is our lesson on Aurora Borealis. We're talking about the northern lights. Doesn't the question come to our mind? What about the South Pole? Doesn't the light appear there? Yes, light appears there also, okay? And we call it Aurora Australis. So this is the lesson on northern lights. A quick recap, okay? We were reading about Aurora Borealis, Aurora, Roman goddess of dawn, Borealis meaning not. It appears in different colors. Yes, we have read that. It is caused by what? It is caused by the solar wind. That is the emission of the charged particles from the sun. It causes these different lights to appear, 
right? And Eskimos and people residing in different parts of the North Pole, the North side, they have different beliefs and different stories. But even if there were different beliefs and different stories, science has been able to come to one conclusion that Northern Lights are solo in, solo in because meeting with the magnetic field and the different atoms in the atmosphere resulting into the appearance of this different color. I hope you have understood the lesson on Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights.